So say you have a computer virus. If you have a computer virus, there's two remedies to fix that virus. That virus can be fixed by the person who perhaps created the virus. He could come in and try to fix it. Or that virus could be created by could be remedied by or solved by the person who's the expert at the system in which the virus lives in. I'm not saying one of them is better than the other. But as I began to think about computer viruses, I started to think about life. So say you have a problem in life, you know, you could you have a toothache or whatever it may be. I don't want to use that example because you're going to have to go to the dentist if you have a toothache. How do I connect this analogy, this metaphor? It's very difficult. It's in my head, but I need to connect it. So you have this virus, say, on your computer. Let's go back to that. Now, I'm a technologist. I know about computers. I know about viruses. I know about these things. And I had an issue with my computer a couple weeks ago. There was a virus. And it wasn't the person who knew about the virus that fixed the computer. It was the person who knew about the system, who mastered the system in which the virus lived. And it got me thinking, that's sort of how life works in a way, where we think that we have to walk through life like it's a glass box. You know, we have to be very careful. We have to be very polite. We have to be very apologetic. We have to be very courteous to everybody. And these are all good things, don't get me wrong, but I think we rely too heavily on them at the expense of making things happen, at the expense of putting your foot down and just commanding what you want out of life. You know, we've become so infantilized, you know, with the advent of things like Facebook and social media and these things. Yes, they're great, but they're weakening us. They're making us cowards. They're making us feel like we're empowered by this false sense of, you know, character and personality when we look at this facade, this, you know, facade book. Not Facebook, facade book. And we grow timid of people. You know, we grow timid of situations. We think that social media is connecting us. It's actually creating and widening the gap between us, ever increasing the falsehood of connectivity. What I'm saying is that you don't have to be the person who specializes in anything in particular in life to connect it back to the person who creates the virus. You don't have to be any particular person. Get rid of that modality. That's an old modality. It's actually never worked. If you understand the system, this life, this society, this whole situation we're in right now, whether it's for the good or the bad, I don't know, I'll leave that up to you. If you understand that system, then you could literally command what you want out of it. You don't have to rely on anybody else. Yes, we are human beings and we are social organisms. We should work together, collaborate together. Of course, that makes sense. But what I'm saying is don't tiptoe through life trying to ingratiate yourself in the eyes of others. Don't tiptoe through life trying to build up all these degrees and, you know, uh, feats of scholasticism, all these sort of things. If you want those things, what I'm saying is take them, create them. Don't expect anyone to give them to you. Don't wait for anyone to help you out with them. This life is not a glass box. It's a, it's, a, it's a mound of clay to be molded. You are the main operator of the system that we live in. You are the director of this video. So direct. What the fuck are you waiting for? Just direct. But believe it or not, some of you will see the connection, the correlation between things like Facebook, things like universities, things like, you know, uh, trying to climb the social ladder, these things are weakening us. They're making us timid, they're making us scared of each other, they're making us uh, forget about confrontation. This is a nice word, confrontation. It usually has a negative connotation. But to confront someone doesn't necessarily mean that it, to confront them negatively, it means to confront them. You could confront somebody with a kiss, you could confront somebody with a curse, it's up to you. What I'm seeing now more than ever is that we're scared to confront. We're scared to confront people, tell people how we feel. We're scared to confront uh, the world. You know, so many people talk about, oh, I want to make money. 
I want to run a business, I want to be a painter, but all you do is talk. You talk about it for years on end, and nothing happens to the point where you become a master at dreaming. All the while, the rest of the world, or the few people I should say, who understand that you could materialize physical reality from your desires, those people understand. Steve Jobs understood, Bill Gates understood, uh, Richard Branson understood, Edison understood, you know, Obama understood. All these people understood how the world works, so they played the system. They didn't wait for anybody to give it to them. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, it takes intelligence that you already have, that you're already born with, the innate intelligence of the human being. Use that intelligence and stop tiptoeing around thinking that you have to impress everybody, thinking that you have to be nice to everybody. You don't. Those are virtues I would hope you would have and practice, but there are not prerequisites to success. Honesty is. Truthhood is, yes. But command what you want out of this system. Don't rely on all these other images, facades of authority. Don't rely on Facebook, social media to help you out. That is not the end game here. The idea is to empower yourself and take control. That's the crux of what I'm saying here. That's the crux of this analogy and these metaphors I'm trying to string together. Do what it do uh, do what you will with that information. Stay of Mate, salute. Drink that sherba mate, circle of drink.com. Peace out.